One of the defining characteristics of success is habit, yet they seem to be out of our control. Whether you're talking about breaking bad habits or forming a good habit, neither is a piece of cake. Good morning. Welcome to the Words of Hope. This is Art Velasquez saying, God bless you today. We will be talking about the habit formation that create an excellent impact to your life. Please tune in until the end, educate yourself more on this topic, and learn how to implement this knowledge in your life for your own good and take a little time to click that subscribe button if you will. The psychology behind habit formation is what helps us create new habits and also help us break bad ones. If you can understand this psychology, you can fully control what you get accustomed to in life. Habits are generally categorized as good or bad. Most people don't look beyond these categories and fail to recognize the true power of habits. Our habits play a vital role in our life. From our daily routine to the rate of success, our habits determine the outcomes for the most part. Unfortunately, we tend to believe that we're in control of our habits despite it is, uh, it is being the other way around. This is why it is important to know how habits are formed. The process is called the habit cycle. The habit cycle has three divisions that work together for a habit to form. Number one is the trigger, second is the repetition, and thirdly is the result. The trigger is the object that encourages the following behavior. Anything around you that reminds you of the habit or makes you want to put it into action is the trigger. It can be anything. It can be a person. It can be a feeling. It can be an event, a scent, or anything at all. Next is uh, uh, the repetition. Habits are not just one action that is disconnected from the rest of uh, your actions. What comes before and after repeatedly or repeated behavior is part of the habit. This is what the repetition is all about. Whenever the trigger ignites your habit, you'll start following the defined repetition that your brain has developed. The entire series of action will always be the same or very similar. Every time the habit is unconsciously put into action. The result is whatever outcome you achieve. For example, if your habit helps you feel emotionally better, that is your result or otherwise can be called gratification or reward. This is something that your brain considers to be a positive outcome. That is why you unconsciously want to repeat the habit again and again to achieve the satisfaction of the result. All habits form the same way. The habit cycle is the culprit behind bad habits, but it is also the one to be credited for the good, uh, good habits or the good ones. Either way, since you're aware of the process now, you can work on into it to achieve the outcome that you desire. Despite unconsciously happening, if you focus on the process, you can try to break bad habits. And luckily, it's possible with a little effort so that you don't have to be stuck with toxic habits for life. There are suggestions that uh, can, break, can break the cycle of bad habits formation. Okay, and let me start with number one. If you want to break a bad habit, you have to take one step at a time. The motivation to break bad habits can make you want to get rid of everything negative all at once. You may think you have all the energy it takes to erase out your bad habits in one go, but neither is this possible nor is it healthy or a healthy approach. Breaking bad habit is not a one-day task or a one-go attempt. It is a process that will take time and a lot of patience. You have to start with a little step at a time and stay consistent. Get rid of those things that lead to bad habits one by one. Adjust your lifestyle slowly. An immediate shock may rid you of one bad habit, but it can trigger many, many more. 
Second suggestion is this. Look into what triggers your bad habit. Your bad habit is strengthened when they are repeated. To avoid doing so, the best way to control them is uh, from the start is this. First, you need to know, uh, you need to take control of the trigger. If you can keep your mind from the object that triggers you into putting the, ha the habit into action, you can prevent the bad habit from strengthening its, uh, strengthening its clout in your life. It will take some time for you to figure out exactly what the trigger is. Keep an eye on the circumstances where you tend to put the bad habit into action. Then start taking a step to control these triggers or simply eradicate the possibility of these triggers from your routine. This will help you prevent negative habit. Uh, this will uh, get you prevent negative habit formation. Thirdly, third suggestion is address each bad habit one by one. A lot of us have a numerous bad habits that we want to get rid of. It sounds almost justified to want to get rid of all of them at once. Just like breaking one bad habit needs time and patience, getting rid of all the bad habits needs even more consistency and effort. Address one bad habit at a time for a higher possibility of success. You will not be stressed out mentally when you break one bad habit at a time. Fourthly, fourth suggestion is replace bad habit with a better one. Habits take a noticeable space in your life and in your mind. When you're trying to get rid of a bad habit, do not leave behind an empty void. Instead, replace it with something better. For example, if you want to stop your alcohol consumption every time you avoid a glass of alcohol, replace it with a healthier drink, milk, or other uh, healthy juices or smoothies. This works simultaneously in breaking a bad habit and you are developing a good one. Here are some ways you can develop good habit. Firstly, identify good habits. We all want to have a good habits, aren't we? We all have a different understanding of what good habits are. But before you start to develop new habits, identify what you want. What habits do you think are good for you? Habits that will help you in your life and uh, you would uh, enjoy having in a long run. This list will keep you keep track as you make effort to get used to them. Secondarily, be persistent and be motivated. Simply deciding that you want to have a better habits is the easiest part of the process. But you need to be persistent and motivated to continue the process until the end. Do every possible way you can to keep your hopes and motivation high. You will need it to focus your goal, build good habits, and then keeping them. The process is simple. You will face multiple obstacles, however, but with the persistence and motivation, you will push to try over and over again despite of a possible repetitive failures. Do not spend time with people who will discourage you. I suggest that you keep away from people who will discourage you from, uh, uh, from uh, removing bad habits and developing good habits. The best conscious way to encourage your mind to get used to things unconsciously is to have a good company. The Bible says, corrupt company, corrupt good habits. So the people you surround yourself with have a major impact in your habit. This is where you develop most of your hidden good habits. Okay, you heard me right. When you surround yourself with good people, you develop your hidden good habit. Stay around the people who ha who, whose habits you want to adapt as well. These people will also encourage you to continue, continue struggling for a better self when you're losing motivation and hope. Naturally, a positive company will strengthen your mind, which allow you to put in more effort in the right direction and have a positive habit formation. Fourthly, uh, develop a, a, a routine. Develop a routine. If you look back on the habit cycle, there are three divisions, the trigger, uh, the trigger and the result are two components that you cannot really control. 
your brain will decide what, what ignite it. Similarly, your mind will feel the reward of the result on its own too. The only thing in the process that you can control uh, uh, when it comes to developing new habit is the repetition. The same cycle is followed every time the habit is ignited. So allow your brain to get used for, uh, uh, to uh, to following a specific repetition that reinforces the good habits that you want to develop. For example, if you want to make it a habit to read the Bible before you go to sleep, you'll have to make a conscious effort for a while. You start by putting your cell phone aside so you will not be distracted. Turn on your bedside reading lamp and turn off all other life lights. Have the Bible within your, uh, within your reach so that you don't forget to read it any day. You'll have to follow this routine a few times before your mind gets a hang of it. Then gradually, you'll get so used to reading your Bible before going to bed, and after a few weeks or months, it will be impossible to fall asleep without reading your Bible. If you've been striving to success but have been falling over and over again, it's time to shift your focus. You've been blaming it on external factors and working on the wrong aspect of your life. What you need to follow is are your habits so that you can consistently work towards a better future, even with unconscious behavior. Understanding the psychology of habit formation will help you lead a healthier, more positive, and a highly successful life. God bless you and I hope and I pray that you will be able to develop a good habit through the help of God. Remember, you might have a very uh, you have you might have every knowledge and learning and you can apply it in your life, but without the help of God, your effort will not produce a good success. Jesus said, apart from God, you can do nothing, but you can do all things through Christ who gives you the strength. Until next time, God bless you. Shalom.